On this subject, David Raup, a University of Chicago paleontologist, says that the trilobites used an optimal design which would require a well-trained and imaginative optical engineer to develop today. In addition, this same ocular system has survived right down to the present day, unchanged over 530 million years, and can still be seen in such insects as bees and dragonflies. The British zoologist Richard Dawkins, the best known contemporary proponent of the theory of evolution, makes the following confession. It is as though they, Cambrian creatures, were just planted there without any evolutionary history. This totally invalidates the theory of evolution because in The Origin of Species, Darwin wrote, if numerous species belonging to the same genera or families have really started into life all at once, the fact would be fatal to the theory of descent with slow modification through natural selection. This blow that Darwin so feared is dealt by the Cambrian period, right at the beginning of the fossil record. because the living species in strata from after the Cambrian also appear suddenly, again with fully formed structures. Basic living classes such as fish, amphibians, reptiles, and mammals, along with hundreds of thousands of species within those classes, emerged on Earth all of a sudden, and all perfectly formed. Among them, there is not a single intermediate form of the kind dreamed of by evolutionists. Another example that shows that life did not develop from the simple to the complex, but was already exceedingly complex the moment it appeared, is the shark, which the fossil record shows to have appeared around 400 million years ago. This creature possessed the very superior ability to replace its lost teeth. Yet many creatures that lived millions of years after it lacked this property. This is incontrovertible proof that the shark did not evolve from the simple to the complex. The fact the vertebrate mammalian eye and that of the invertebrate octopus, which species emerged hundreds of millions of years earlier than the mammals, resemble one another and have the same complex structures and systems is still more evidence. This fact alone proves that there was never any evolution in either functional or morphological terms from the simple to the complex. The evolutionist paleontologist Mark Zarnecki admits as much. A major problem in proving the theory has been the fossil record, the imprints of vanished species preserved in the Earth's geological formations. This record has never revealed traces of Darwin's hypothetical intermediate variants. Instead, species appear abruptly, and this anomaly has fueled the creationist argument that each species was created by God. There is no difference between fossils hundreds of millions of years old and many specimens of these same organisms still in existence today. Their remaining unchanged completely invalidates the theory that maintains that living things are in a constant state of change and that they constantly develop as a result of chance. Yet the fossil record demonstrates the exact opposite. 
The very first fish, reptiles, or mammals that emerged on Earth are exactly identical to present-day fish, reptiles, and mammals. Some species have become extinct, but no species has ever morphed into another. This demonstrates that God created living species independently, and that living things have never undergone any evolution since the day of their creation. We may list a few of the many examples of this. A 100 million year old ant embedded in amber is identical to modern day ants. This shrimp-like creature, bearing the scientific name Triops concriformis, has remained unchanged for 300 million years. A 400 million year old sea star is indistinguishable from a living specimen. A 355 to 295 million year old dragonfly fossil is identical to those species living today. There is no difference between wasp fossils millions of years old and wasps alive today. A 190 million year old crocodile fossil compared with a living specimen. A tortoise that has undergone no changes and a 50 million year old fossil tortoise. There is no difference between a 195 million year old fossil shrimp and those alive today. The alleged evolution of plants is also no more than a myth. On the screen can be seen a living specimen of the plant Acer monspesulanum and a 30 million year old fossil. Fossils of the invertebrate mollusk known as the chambered nautilus frequently encountered in today's seas are also found in Cambrian strata dating back 520 million years. The nautilus has undergone no evolution from the time of its creation down to the present day. A fossil fish dating back 200 million years shows no difference between the old fish and those living today. If evolutionists need to show that one species turned into another, then they need to produce evidence in the form of fossils of intermediate forms that show these different species allegedly evolving into one another. Any theory that maintains that jellyfish developed into fish, fish into reptiles, and reptiles into birds and mammals must unearth fossils to demonstrate that this actually occurred. Darwin admitted as much, but wrote that there must be countless specimens of such fossils, although none were actually available at the time. Yet in the intervening 150 years, no intermediate form has been discovered. There are some 100 million fossils from all over the world in thousands of museums and collections. Each of these belongs to a species separated from every other by definitive features and unique structures. No fossils of half-fish, semi-amphibians, half-dinosaur, half-birds, or half-ape, half-humans of the kind sought by evolutionists have ever been found. The evolutionist fossil expert Derek W. Ager admits as such. The point emerges that if we examine the fossil record in detail, whether at the level of orders or of species, we find, over and over again, not gradual evolution, but the sudden explosion of one group at the expense of another. <laughs>